Hey there, welcome to the Electronics channel. In this video, I want to talk about current mirrors and the way that they work. So what we're looking at here is a current mirror circuit. The basic idea of a current mirror is that the current IX on this side of the circuit gets mirrored over here on this side of the circuit, regardless of what the load is. That's not totally true. These two transistors need to be kept in the active region, but as long as they are in the active region, then the current IL will be approximately equal to the current IX. And typically these current mirror circuits are used in integrated circuits because as we'll see in a minute, the characteristics of Q1 need to be identical to or nearly identical to the characteristics of Q2. Okay, let's, let's take a closer look at the circuit to see how it is working. So to start off with, let's look at the base current IB1. And as we know from our knowledge of BJTs, IB1 is going to be equal to IE1 divided by beta plus one. Assuming again we're operating in the active region. And if beta is big enough, this is going to be approximately equal to IE1 over beta. Similarly, IB2 will be approximately IE2 over beta. From the nature of this circuit, we can see that the base emitter junction of Q1 will be equal to the base emitter junction of Q2. Now if these transistors have nearly identical characteristics, then because these two voltages are the same, the current IB1 will be equal to the current IB2, and then let's just call that IB. Similarly, if IB1 and IB2 are equal, then IE1 and IE2 will also be equal, and let's just call that IE. Now let's take a look at what's happening over here with IX. Well, we can see from the voltage loop starting at VCC, dropping some voltage across RX, then going to the base and then to the emitter, we can come up with the KVL equation and then rearrange that to solve in terms of IX. And so IX is going to be equal to the voltage across RX, which is going to be VCC minus VBE, all divided by RX. So the value of Rx is going to set the value of Ix. At the same time, we can also see that Ix using, using KCL or Kirchhoff's current law, Ix coming is coming into this node and coming out of that node will be this current, which is IB1 plus IB2, and this current, which is IC. And since IB1 and IB2 are the same, we can just call that 2IB plus IC, and as we've assumed up here that beta is really big, so beta plus one and beta are approximately the same, which means that IC and IE will also be approximately the same. And using a little arithmetic trick, let's call this, well, just a substitution. So this is just two IE over beta, plus to make a common denominator, we'll go beta over beta times IE, which if we factor out the IE term here, what we find out is that this is equal to IE times beta plus two over beta. And again, if beta is big enough, then beta plus two over beta is approximately one. So this is just approximately equal to IE. Putting that all together, we see that IX is approximately equal to IE IE1 and IE2 are equal to each other. I've designated them as IE, and that is approximately equal to IX. And since I can set the value of IX by setting the value of RX, I control IE, which means I'm going to control IL. So if I set the value of IX based on my, by using, by setting the value of RX, then I will also be setting the value of the current through the load. So as that load changes, my current is not going to change by very much, as long as these transistors are kept in the active region. Here's a very simple example. I can figure out the value of Ix, given that I've got a 10 volt source and a one kilo ohm Rx value. Ix will be 10 volts minus the voltage between the base emitter junction, which is going to be approximately 0.7 volts, the diode drop between the base and the emitter, all divided by 1,000, which works out to 9.3 milliamps. And that current is going to be mirrored through the load. So IL will be also approximately 
milliamps. If this load is simply a resistor, if that resistor changed somehow, then what's going to happen is this current is going to be maintained. This 9.3 milliamps is going to be approximately maintained, and the way that that current can, can be maintained is by changing the voltage across the load. The source voltage isn't going to change, but what will change is the collector and emitter voltage is going to increase and dec or decrease in order to maintain the IL current approximately constant. So this has been a brief overview of current mirrors. I hope you learned a little bit and I will see you in the next video.